hi guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to make a silk chemise and this basically can be worn on its own as a nightgown or can be worn inside a robe depending on what kind of robe that you have so if you'd like to see that definitely keep watching it promises to be another fun and detailed tutorial and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't thank you and enjoy the video To make your chemise, you need the following items. You need some lace trimmings and I've decided to go for a different color so I can create a nice contrast. As you can see, it looks nice put together. You'd also need some silk fabric and I've got about a yard and a half of silk fabric here. You need your hip curve, however if you don't have your hip curve you can still work. You need your pins and magnets. You'd also need your bias tape maker and your bias tape, that's if you're not using bias tape from your fabric. You need your tailor's chalk and this is obviously the tailor's chalk that I use most times. You'd also need your fabric scissors and your snips and of course you need your measuring tape. Start off by folding your fabric into four so that the folded edges are towards you and the separated edges are on the opposite side. Measure out the width of the fabric to be sure that you have more than a quarter of the hip measurement plus some allowances. Then go ahead and pin the folded edge onto the separated edges as shown. Starting at the very top, mark out 2 inches vertically all around and then go ahead and connect these points with a horizontal line. This line will be called the top line. For this chemise, the total length I'm going for is 34 inches. However, because most chemises, or because yeah, most chemises are like spaghetti strap, you don't necessarily start at one. So you want to make sure, you want to determine rather where you would like the straps to start. And for me, I would like them to start at four inches. However, I recommend four or five inches, nothing lower and nothing higher. So for me, I decided to go with 4 inches for my chemise. So that means that every measurement I take, I'll be placing my measuring tape starting at 4 inches from the top line as opposed to 1 inch. Starting with your measuring tape placed at 4 inches or 5 inches on the top line, cut out the desired length of your chemise plus 1 inch for the hemming allowance. With your measuring tape starting at 4 or 5 inches on the top line, mark out the shoulder to bust points measurement vertically as shown. With your measuring tape in place, mark out 2 inches above the bust line to find the armhole line. Still with your measuring tape in place, mark out the shoulder to waist measurement vertically. And then lastly, placing the top of your measuring tape on the waistline, mark out the waist to hip measurement or the hip line measurement using the formula on the screen. You should have your top line, ammo line, bust line, waistline, hip line and the hem line. Starting at the folded edges, Mark out half the shoulder measurement plus half an inch sewing allowance on the top line. You also want to repeat this measurement on the ammo line as shown. On the bust line, mark out a quarter of the bust measurement plus one inch for the ease and sewing allowance. On the waist line, mark out a quarter of the waist measurement plus two inches for the sewing allowance and the ease. On the hip and hem lines, Mark out a quarter of the hip measurement plus one inch for sewing allowance and ease. Mark out a quarter of the bust measurement plus one inch on the ammo line as well. Connect the points as shown, making sure to blend out all sharp lines. If you don't have a hip curve, connect the waist to the hip using your free hand like I just did. If you want something less curvy, add one inch to the waistline and then connect your points like so. 
On the top line, mark 4 inches horizontally. With a slight curve, gently connect the armhole to the 4 inch mark on the top line as shown. With your measuring tape starting at 4 inches or 5 inches on the top line, mark out the desired neck depth and then draw in the neck curve. I usually wouldn't go for anything lower than 7 inches. Cut out the pieces as shown and you should have two pieces unfold. After cutting out the framework for the chemise, carefully separate one of the pieces as shown and then cut the neck depth further by cutting off 2 inches. This piece will be the back piece as the neck will be lower than the other neckline. Fold away the back and front pieces and then go ahead and cut out your bias strip. There's always the option of using a store-bought bias, however, I like to make my own bias strip out of the same fabric and to do that, what you need to do is cut out a rectangle or square piece of fabric like so and then you want to go ahead and cut through diagonally from one edge to the other edge as shown. After cutting through diagonally, each strip you cut out along the diagonal line becomes a bias strip. So basically what you want to do next is measure the width of your bias strip that you want starting from the diagonal line that you just cut. And for me, I recommend a strip that is not less than one and a half inches wide, especially if this is your first time making a chemise. A total of 4 bias strips will be needed. You need 2 long ones for the straps and then 2 other ones to finish the neckline for both the front and the back pieces. And if you would like to use your bias tape maker to create folded lines on the bias strip, all you need to do is feed your bias strip into the bias tape maker and then pull it out on the other edge and as you can see it has fold lines just like the um, store bought ones however you do need to iron it in place as you pull it out and there's also the option of using a ready-made bias if you'd like to see a video of how i use the bias tape maker let me know in the comments below Starting with the back piece, find the middle of the back piece by notching the center of the neckline as shown. At this point, I like to add my label onto my back piece, so what I do is pin my label onto the notch center of the neckline, making sure that my label is pinned to the wrong side of the back piece. And then go ahead and flip it to the right side and turn the neckline or finish the neckline with your bias strip as shown. Pin the bias strip to the neckline so that the right sides of the bias strip and the fabric are facing each other and then go ahead and sew on a quarter of an inch sewing allowance. After sewing the bias strip to the neckline, this is what it looks like. Go ahead and flip your fabric over to the wrong side and then bend the bias strip as shown. If you would like a detailed video on how to finish necklines with bias strips, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video on it. Finish up the neckline by folding the bias like so and then go ahead and sew it into place.
After sewing and ironing the neckline, this is what it should look like. Put away the back piece and then finish the neckline for the front using a bias strip and the same method. After finishing and ironing the front neckline, this is what it looks like. Place both pieces of your chemise on each other and then go ahead and pin the sides together, making sure the right sides are facing each other. After pinning the sides together, mark out the sewing allowance of half an inch all the way through. Then sew both pieces together, starting at the armhole all the way to the hem. You also want to make sure that you repeat the process for the other side. So you want to pin the sides together, mark out the sewing allowance and sew on a half an inch sewing allowance. After sewing the sides, this is what it looks like. Go ahead and turn it inside out and then give it a good iron, making sure to iron out all the side seams. Next, we will be fixing the straps and to do that, you want to turn your chemise inside out. Grab the long bias strip that we put aside for the straps and then go ahead and fold it like so. You can hold the fold in with a pin if you feel the need to, then go ahead and pin it onto the armhole starting at the side seam point. You want to pin it from the side seam point all the way to the top of the neckline as shown, making sure to pin it so that the right side of the bias is sitting on the wrong side of the fabric. After pinning, sew in place on a quarter of an inch sewing allowance. After sewing, this is what you have and as you can see you have the rest of the strip dangling. Remember at the beginning I said determine how long you want your strap to be? This is where that comes into place. So if you went with 4 inches, then what you want to do is that you want to go 4 inches times 2 plus 1 inch which will give a total of 9. If you went with 5 inches, you want to do 5 inches times 2, that's for the front and back, plus 1 inch and that will give a total of 10 inches. And because this is along the bias, it will still stretch. So for this, because I went with 4 inches, so I did 4 inches times 2 plus 1 inch which gives a total of 9 inches and I start marking from the neck point where I just finished sewing, mark up my 9 inches and as you can see when I stretch it out, it stretches out to 10 inches which means that this will sit comfortably on my client without being too tight or too loose. Continue pinning the bias strip to the chemise, starting at the back neckline, you want to pin from that 9 inch point that you've marked on your strip and you want to pin making sure that the strip is not tangled and the right side of the strip is sitting on the wrong side of the chemise. So you pin from that neckline point up until the side seam as shown. While pinning, you want to make sure that the bias strip forms a whole loop or circle and that means it starts from one side seam and it ends on that same side seam but it goes all around. After pinning along the back arm O, go ahead and sew on a quarter of an inch sewing allowance, making sure to end your stitches after the fold of the first bias as shown. After sewing, cut off the excess bias and then what you have should look like this. Finish off the straps by folding or piping like so. At this point, I advise that you observe the video closely as I will not be able to explain what I'm doing. However, I will show you as closely and as many times as possible.
you basically want to fold it in twice like you're hemming and then sew it into place. So I decided to show you on my sewing machine how it is being done and I don't know if you can tell but it is slightly tricky as I have a small surface area to work with and that's why I recommended not having your strips less than one and a half inches wide. If it's possible you could do two inches because the more surface area you have the easier it is for you to pipe. And as you can see, I'm basically just piping the straps. However, when you're working with chemise, you do need to be very careful and you need to work slowly or gently because first off, you're working with silk, which is slightly slippery, and then you're working with a very small surface area. So you need to be neat and you need to take your time. After finishing the first strap, repeat the process for the second side. Guys, I don't know if you can tell but at this point I struggled a little bit and it must have taken me all of two minutes to sort out just that point. Yes guys, two minutes for just that particular point. So yes, it just goes to show that I still struggle. However, with constant practice, it's not even going to be a big deal. So after finishing and ironing out the straps, 
this is what they look like hem the bottom of the chemise by folding in half an inch twice Iron out the chemise and it should look like this. So at this point, if you like to leave your chemise like this, it's absolutely fine. However, if you like to add some lace trimmings to the bottom or any other part, go ahead and do so. We'll be adding some lace trimmings to the hem of this. So basically, because my lace trimmings are super wide, I'm going ahead to fold it into four and then I'm going to cut it right down the middle so that I have something that is less wide than what I had initially. So I went ahead to place the lace trimmings on the hem of the chemise to determine or decide where I want the lace to sit on it. After deciding where I want the lace to sit on the chemise, I went ahead to mark that all around the chemise so that I have uniformity. Starting at one of the side seams, carefully pin the lace trimmings to the chemise, making sure to leave out about 1 inch for the sewing allowance at the edge of the lace trimming. You want to go ahead and pin the lace trimmings to the chemise all around. To avoid a tacky look, fold in the cut edge of the trimmings as shown. After pinning the lace trimming to the chemise, leave about 2 inches extra and cut off the excess. Sew the lace trimmings to the chemise by top stitching, making sure not to start at the very beginning and also not to end at the very end. You want to make sure that there's enough room so that you can close the lace trimmings neatly. Close up the lace by marking out where it should stop on the side seam with your fabric marker or fabric chalk and then go ahead and sew along that point. After sewing the lace trimmings together, cut off the excess and then finish up by sewing the lace trimmings to the chemise. Trim and iron out the chemise, making sure to iron with low heat so that you don't burn the lace or the silk. At this point, we are now done and this is what it should look like. Thank you so much guys for watching this video and watching to the very end. You guys are absolutely awesome. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button if you haven't. And also don't forget to follow me on social media. Thank you so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.